Otto Neurit. Otto Karl Wilhelm Neurit, German, December 10, 1882, December 22, 1945, was an Austrian born philosopher, philosopher of science, sociologist, and political economist. Before he fled his native country in 1934, Neurit was one of the leading figures of the Vienna Circle. Early life Neurit was born to a Jewish family in Vienna, the son of Wilhelm Neurit, 1840-1901 a well-known political economist at the time. Helene Mijerka was his cousin. He studied mathematics and physics at the University of Vienna, he formally enrolled for classes only for two semesters in 1902-3. In 1906, he gained his PhD in the Department of Political Science and Statistics at the University of Berlin with a thesis entitled Zur Anschauung der Antike Überhandel, Gewerbund Landwirtschaft, on the conceptions in antiquity of trade, commerce and agriculture. He married Anna Schapire in 1907, who died in 1911 while bearing their son, Paul, and then married a close friend, the mathematician and philosopher Olga Hahn. That perhaps because of his first wife's blindness and then because of the outbreak of war, Paul was sent to a children's home outside Vienna, where Neurit's mother lived, and returned to live with both of his parents when he was nine years old. Career in Vienna Neurit taught political economy at the new Vienna Commercial Academy in Vienna, until war broke out. Subsequently, he directed the Department of War Economy in the War Ministry. In 1917, he completed his habilitation thesis Die Kriegswurstschaftsfelher und ihre Bedeutung für die Zukunft, War Economics and Their Importance for the Future, at Heidelberg University. In 1918, he became director of the Deutsches Kriegswurstschaftsmuseum, German Museum of War Economy, later the Deutsches Wirtschaftsmuseum, at Leipzig. Here he worked with Wolfgang Schumann, known from the Durerbund for which Neurit had written many articles. During the political crisis which led to the armistice, Schumann urged him to work out a plan for socialization in Saxony. Dad along with Schumann and Hermann Kreinold developed the program Kreinold Neurit Schumann. Neurit then joined the German Social Democratic Party in 1918-19 and ran an office for central economic planning in Munich. When the Bavarian Soviet Republic was defeated, Neurit was imprisoned but returned to Austria after intervention from the Austrian government. While in prison he wrote Anti-Spengler, a critical attack on Oswald Spengler's decline of the West. In Red Vienna, he joined the Social Democrats and became secretary of the Austrian Association for Settlements and Small Gardens, Verband für Siedlungs und Kleingartenwesen, a collection of self-help groups that set out to provide housing and garden plots to its members. In 1923, he founded a new museum for housing and city planning called Siedlungs Museum. In 1925 he renamed it Gesage und Wirtschafts Museum in Wien, Museum of Society and Economy in Vienna, and founded an own association for it, in which the Vienna City Administration, the trade unions, the Chamber of Workers and the Bank of Workers became members, then Mayor Karl Zeitz having acted as first proponent of the association. Dat Julius Tondler, city councillor for welfare and health served at the first board of the museum together with other prominent social democratic politicians. The museum was provided with exhibition rooms at buildings of the city administration, the most prominent being the People's Hall at the Vienna City Hall. To make the museum understandable for everybody, Neurit worked on graphic design and visual education. In the late 1920s, graphic designer and communications theorist Rudolf Modley served as an assistant to Neurit, contributing to a new means of communication, a visual language. With the illustrator Gerd Arns and with Marie Reibmeister, who he would marry in 1941, Neurit created Isotype, a symbolic way of representing quantitative information via easily interpretable icons. At international conventions of city planners, Neurit presented and promoted his communication tools. In the 1920s, Neurit also became an ardent logical positivist, and was the main author of the Vienna Circle Manifesto. Da he was the driving force behind the Unity of Science movement and the International Encyclopedia of Unified Science. During the 1930s, he also began promoting isotype as an international picture language, connecting it both with the adult education movement and with the internationalist passion for new and artificial languages, although he stressed in talks and correspondence that isotype was not intended to be a standalone language, and was limited in what it could communicate. Exile. Netherlands. During the Austrian Civil War in 1934, Neurit had been working in Moscow. 
Anticipating problems, he had asked to get a coded message in case it would be dangerous for him to return to Austria. As Marie Reidmeister reported later, after receiving the telegram Carnap is waiting for you, Nora chose to travel to The Hague, the Netherlands, instead of Vienna, to be able to continue his international work. He was joined by Arndt's after affairs in Vienna had been sorted out as best they could. His wife also fled to the Netherlands, where she died in 1937. British Isles After the Luftwaffe had bombed Rotterdam, he and Marie Reidmeister fled to England, crossing the channel with other refugees in an open boat. He and Reidmeister married in 1941 after a period of being interned on the Isle of Man, Neurit was in Onken camp. In England, he and his wife set up the Isotype Institute in Oxford and he was asked to advise on, and design isotype charts for, the intended redevelopment of the slums of Bilston, near Wolverhampton. Neuert died, suddenly and unexpectedly, in December 1945. After his death, Marie Neuert continued the work of the Isotype Institute, publishing Neuert's writings posthumously, completing projects he had started in writing many children's books using the Isotype system, until her death in the 1980s. Work Most work by and about Neurit is still available only in German. However he also wrote in English, using Ogden's basic English. His scientific papers are held at the Nordhollands Archiv in Harlem, the Otto and Marie Neurit isotype collection is held in the Department of Typography and Graphic Communication at the University of Reading in England. Dot. Philosophy of Science and Language Neurit's work on protocol sentences try to reconcile an empiricist's concern for the grounding of knowledge and experience with the essential publicity of science. Neurit suggested that reports of experience should be understood to have a third person and hence public and impersonal character, rather than as being first-person subjective pronouncements. Bertrand Russell took issue with Neurit's account of protocol sentences in his book An Inquiry into Meaning and Truth, p. 139 ff on the grounds that it severed the connection to experience that is essential to an empiricist account of truth, facts and knowledge. One of Neurit's later and most important works, Physicalism, completely transformed the nature of the logical positivist discussion of the program of unifying the sciences. Neurit delineates and explains his points of agreement with the general principles of the positivist program and its conceptual basis. He then rejects the positivist treatment of language in general and, in particular, some of Wittgenstein's early fundamental ideas. First, Neurit rejects isomorphism between language and reality as useless metaphysical speculation, which would call for explaining how words and sentences could represent things in the external world. Instead, Neurit proposed that language and reality coincide, that reality consists in simply the totality of previously verified sentences in the language, and truth of a sentence is about its relationship to the totality of already verified sentences. If a sentence fails to concord, or cohere, with the totality of already verified sentences, then either it should be considered false, or some of that totality's propositions must be modified somehow. He thus views truth as internal coherence of linguistic assertions, rather than anything to do with facts or other entities in the world. Moreover, the criterion of verification is to be applied to the system as a whole, see semantic holism, and not to single sentences. Such ideas profoundly shape the holistic verificationism of Willard Van Orman Quine. Quine's book Word and Object, p. 3f, made famous Neurit's analogy which compares the holistic nature of language and consequently scientific verification with the construction of a boat which is already at sea, cf. Ship of Theseus. Keith Stanovich discusses this metaphor in context of memes and meme plexes and refers to this metaphor as an Arabian bootstrap. Neurit also rejected the notion that science should be reconstructed in terms of sense data, because perceptual experiences are too subjective to constitute a valid foundation for the formal reconstruction of science. Thus, the phenomenological language that most positivists were still emphasizing was to be replaced by the language of mathematical physics. This would allow for the required objective formulations because it is based on spatio-temporal coordinates. Such a physicalistic approach to the sciences would facilitate the elimination of every residual element of metaphysics because it would permit them to be reduced to a system of assertions relative to physical facts. Dot. Finally, Neurit suggested that since language itself is a physical system, because it is made up of an ordered succession of sounds or symbols, it is capable of describing its own structure without contradiction. These ideas help form the foundation of the sort of physicalism which remains the dominant position in metaphysics and especially the philosophy of mind. Economics 
In economics, Neurath was notable for his advocacy of ideas like in-kind economic accounting in place of monetary accounting. In the 1920s, he also advocated Valsage Elysium, that is complete rather than merely partial socialization. Thus, he advocated changes to the economic system that were more radical than those of the mainstream social democratic parties of Germany and Austria. In the 1920s, Neurath debated these matters with leading social democratic theoreticians, such as Karl Kautsky, who insisted that money is necessary in a socialist economy. While serving as a government economist during the war, Neurath had observed that as a result of the war, in-kind calculus was applied more often and more systematically than before. War was fought with ammunition and with the supply of food, not with money i.e. that goods were incommensurable. This convinced Neurath of the feasibility of economic planning in terms of amounts of goods and services, without use of money. In response to these ideas, Ludwig van Mises wrote his famous essay of 1920, Economic Calculation in the Socialist Commonwealth. To convert from capitalism to socialism, many have argued the best route is market socialism. Though many, including early 20th century Austrian economist Otto Neurath believed it was war socialism that would come into effect after capitalism. For Neurath, war economies showed advantages in speed of decision and execution, optimal distribution of means relative to, military, goals, and no-nonsense evaluation and utilization of inventiveness. Two disadvantages which he perceived as resulting from centralized decision-making were a reduction in productivity and a loss of the benefits of simple economic exchanges, but he thought that the reduction in productivity could be mitigated by means of scientific techniques based on analysis of workflows etc. As advocated by Frederick Winslow Taylor, Neurath believed that socio-economic theory and scientific methods could be applied together in contemporary practice. Neurath's view on socio-economic development was similar to the materialist conception of history first elaborated in classical Marxism, in which technology and the state of epistemology come into conflict with social organization. In particular, Neurath, influenced also by James George Fraser, associated the rise of scientific thinking and empiricism, positivism with the rise of socialism, both of which were coming into conflict with older modes of epistemology such as theology, which was allied with idealist philosophy, the latter of which served reactionary purposes. However, Neurath followed Fraser in claiming that primitive magic closely resembled modern technology, implying an instrumentalist interpretation of both. Neurath claimed that magic was unfalsifiable and therefore disenchantment could never be complete in a scientific age. Doubt adherents of the scientific view of the world recognize no authority other than science and reject all forms of metaphysics. Under the socialist phase of history, Neurath predicted that the scientific worldview would become the dominant mode of thought. Publications Otto Neurath wrote several books and articles. Books, a selection. Articles, a selection. Fiction. Articles, a selection, fiction.